And um, it's pretty short. So you just have a period at the beginning, and then the name of the class name. And um, the rest just looks like the rest of the other types of CSS. Uh, and identification is uh, very similar, except that identifications, as you know, are unique, and that they're specified in um, the CSS selection by a pound sign. So I put this also in the document just for your reference, if you care. Um, and they also have a CSS validator. So the CSS validator can help you figure out some problems if you do have them. But um, of course, it's not foolproof, like just like the HTML document or HTML validator. Okay, so um, that's it for the review. So now we're going to talk about um, JavaScript today. So as we know, we already for the past several weeks we've gone into HTML and CSS and do a little bit of Photoshop, which is not in this framework at all. But um, so as we know, HTML and CSS were markup languages. Uh, HTML told us how the document should be structured, and CSS basically gave us an ability to style the, the document. So JavaScript is um, going to be a, a, a new player that helps us sort of create more dynamic elements in our HTML and CSS, so that um, after the page loads, you can do some pretty cool stuff, uh, which you'll see soon. And um, a short roadmap for later on, we're going to be doing some PHP and MySQL, which are server-side technologies. And, um, and basically from here on out, starting from JavaScript to PHP and MySQL, we're going to do more of a programming thing, which we haven't done um, so much with HTML and CSS, because those are markup languages. OK. So um, dynamic pages. So what makes JavaScript very special is that it allows, allows you to move away from the static uh, pages that only consist of HTML and CSS and go into dynamic pages, uh, which are more specialized by using JavaScript and um, sometimes PHP or a similar uh, web technology. So with dynamic pages, um, the way to identify them is that the dynamic, dynamic pages change after they've been loaded. So if you load the page and then you click a button or move um, a little module around, that is JavaScript because those are changes made to the document after the page has been loaded. And, um, and another thing with dynamic pages is that they are also served uh, differently depending on the user. So if, for example, if you go to Facebook, you log in, uh, you see your feed and only your feed. Um, if someone else logs into their Facebook account, they're not going to see the same feed at all because it's specialized. And uh, that, that right there, the ability to specialize according to the specific user is done through uh, PHP um, for in Facebook's, Facebook's case. So, uh, and once again, stack pages will look the same no matter what you do, um, as long as you don't reload or reload the browser at all. So, uh, we have a couple quick examples of what I'm talking about for JavaScript. Uh, so here, as you notice, like within the past several months, um, Google has implemented their instant search. I think it's called instant search, I don't remember exactly. But anyway, so you'll start typing into the, the search box, and it immediately starts searching based on um, your keystrokes. And um, our own website uh, also uses JavaScript. So those planets that are moving and the UFOs that are moving, those all use JavaScript to um, animate those objects. OK, so I'm going to show you some cool JavaScript examples. So here's just an HTML5 JavaScript thing. Um, I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. So I just uploaded an image that I grabbed from Google, and supposedly it is able to determine where your eyes are in the picture. And then if you move your mouse here, <laughs> you get this really cool laser thing. So, um, so this is sort of a mesh of HTML5, uh, which um, is not exactly JavaScript. Or it's not JavaScript here, actually. Um, but the elements here that are JavaScript is the tracking of your cursor. So as you move it around, it's able to determine like and change the rays, the angles of the rays, um, based on where your cursor is by tracking it through JavaScript. Here's another cool thing. Um, 
You take a look here, all these people start following your cursor. Yeah, it's a little bit creepy, but, uh, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. So this uses the same sort of uh, idea of just basically taking the position of your cursor and sort of changing things around that variable. <coughs> So uh, once again, here's an example of where we have dynamic pages that are different depending on the request. And usually the request is uh, dependent upon the specific user. So in this case, I went to Amazon.com. I was logged in. And uh, we can see Amazon does a lot of different things to make this page very unique for myself. Uh, for example, it says, hello, Jonathan. Um, it greets me. And then it says, if I'm not Jonathan, then I should log out. Um, and right here, Amazon does some really cool stuff about tracking your searches so that it can suggest items that it thinks you might like. Um, in this case, I was looking for headphones earlier, and it just suggested a bunch of headphones for me to buy. So that is um, an example of dynamic pages. So here's a question to sort of figure out the difference between JavaScript and PHP. Um, the question is, for dynamic pages, uh, which of the following does um, JavaScript allow us to do? And we still have candy to give out. Come on. OK, go. Change after load? Right, change after load. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, um, basically change after load, it's just the same examples that we went through earlier. Um, whereas we had, for the different requests, the reason why JavaScript's not a different depending on request exactly is because if you look back at that Amazon example, um, all that stuff was sort of rendered in the background first. Like Amazon saw that I was myself and I was trying to contact them. So they specialized the HTML pages um, specifically for me and then ship them off to my browser. So nothing changed, none of those um, elements that were specific to myself had changed after the browser loaded. Okay, so um, basically here's more of a in-depth level of what JavaScript does. Um, if we take a look at the steps um, that occur when you, and whenever you enter a URL, you, from the client side, you go to the web browser and you request a, the URL of the website. Um, just say google.com. And uh, over here on the web server, the web server receives the request. And then after it receives the request, it sends out that HTML and CSS. Um, and then your, in, your, the browser uh, will interpret and render those received files. And uh, remember one of the things you said about HTML is that HTML is a hypertext transfer protocol, meaning that it adds special links to other resources on the web, right? So that um, just by loading one HTML, that HTML, when it's interpreted, can load other uh, files like images and CSS. Um, so that's what happens here on the server side after the browser uh, interprets the HTML. And after all that's done, uh, then JavaScript gets executed. And after JavaScript is executed, um, it does a myriad, myriad of things. Um, sometimes it recontacts the server um, to do some cool stuff. OK, so uh, I have another question here. Why can't JavaScript serve a different page depending on requests? Yeah. Because it's client side? Yeah, so it's because it's client side. And, um, so what that means is that it's no longer contacting, uh, for this specific case, it's no longer contacting the server. So all that JavaScript is running locally on your client or on your browser. Uh, and because it never contacts the server, it can't change depending on some requests. Um, so here's just an example of what happens uh, when you, basically the HTTP thing I was talking about, about how 
when you load up an HTML page, um, other resources get loaded along with it. Um, so here's one, one of our old, old sites where if you had access to our website, you would see um, several other, uh, several other um, resources get loaded along with that HTML page. Okay, so uh, what is JavaScript? So JavaScript is a programming language and it's object-oriented um, but without classes. It's, it's kind of weird in that way. Um, so for JavaScript, uh, we know that JavaScript is not a markup language. Uh, it is a programming language. So as compared to before where we were talking about HTML and CSS, those are strictly markup type languages um, and they were static. Uh, so with JavaScript, what we're able to do is um, create dynamic pages, and those dynamic pages, um, and JavaScript creates those dynamic pages by modifying the HTML and CSS. Uh, and one little thing that I think some people who never really heard of JavaScript don't know is that JavaScript has absolutely no relationship to the Java programming language uh, at all. So um, here's a cool sort of analogy about what JavaScript is. Um, here we have a kid, and uh, so what he's doing is just playing with markers uh, and paper. So you can think of um, HTML and CSS as the marker and or the, the color and all this sort of styling here. And JavaScript is the kid itself who is changing the drawing, adding color to things, making lines, and um, all those types of things. Um, so once again, just to break it down a little more, um, what JavaScript does is um, it allows you to sort of play with uh, HTML and CSS as blocks. And um, we'll explain that a little bit more. Uh, for now, it's just a high-level overview. And what it, uh, what it does is it can move things around, um, change the CSS of things. Um, it can remove and um, add blocks by um, basically creating and adding uh, HTML uh, elements and CSS rules. So uh, we've been talking about a lot about JavaScript and um, once again, more detailed understanding of how we can isolate exactly what JavaScript is, is uh, we can tell JavaScript is active by the dynamic pages, of course. Um, but there's one sort of caveat. Whenever, I mean, you know that whenever you go and hover over links that we have like sort of different link states. So, um, so for example, if you clicked on a link, right, uh, that link gets a visited attribute and whenever, um, you sort of have in your styling, um, you have these pseudo classes. You can specify those different states of a link. Um, but the thing is to keep in mind is that that itself is not JavaScript and it's strictly um, CSS. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some more JavaScript examples. So um, here we just have like this really simple menu here. and all this right here is done by JavaScript. Um, basically, some whenever you hover over these elements, uh, an event gets triggered, and then what it does is it slides around these uh, these extra divs. Oh, they're probably divs, yeah. So it just slides these guys around. Um, here's another really cool example of JavaScript use. So here, um, when you load up the web page, you get to this um, web page right here. And if you try to click on any of the other um, sub-elements uh, or other pieces of the navigation, then what it does is it sort of shifts you around um, the entire HTML page. So you can think of your browser as uh, well, literally a window, and the background is like all over everywhere. And what JavaScript does is help you um, sort of focus which area you want to look at. So on that website, when you load the original website, let's, uh, like if you load the home page, it loads all of the authors, portfolio, and contact pages at the same time? Yes. So, yeah, whenever you go to this site, it just does this cool thing um, where everything's already loaded. Um, uh, here's another 
the site, you guys can check out. Oh, yeah, I'll just show you right now. Um, I, don't know, I just thought this was cool. It's a very similar design, but I think it's really creative. Um, yeah. And basically, it does the same sort of stuff as the other site did, but created this like three level stackable interface rather than like a four box interface. Uh -huh. All right, so I've talked a lot about JavaScript, what it does, uh, and you're probably wondering how, where exactly does this go? So there are two ways to put JavaScript into your documents. Uh, one way is by introducing script tags, um, which can pretty much be put anywhere. Um, ideally, you either put it in the head or the body, um, and within those two, within either of those two elements. So um, if, I, I don't know if you recall, but um, we showed you a different, another way to do CSS other than linking, which was to do um, sort of in uh, CSS styling within the document itself by creating style tags. Um, JavaScript works in very much a similar way, and um, except that right here for the type, you have to specify that it's a text slash JavaScript. Uh, the second way is also very similar to the way we link CSS files. And um, it starts with a script tag and then it tells you what type of script it is because there's actually other different types of script other than JavaScript. But um, for, the, for the scope of this course, we're only going to be talking about JavaScript, so don't worry about this too much, just copy it down. Um, and for the source, um, usually whenever I do JavaScript files, I put them in a JavaScript folder. And uh, and then my JavaScript code gets put into a file in that JavaScript folder, and then we end up closing with um, just a script tag. And um, one of the things is that when you create these files, there's nothing really special about them. Um, you just do what you do when you create those CSS or HTML files. You go to your text editor, um, and then save it as whatever name you want .js. And the text editors that you'll be working with in this class um, automatically figure out that it's JavaScript and will help color code the co color code the document uh, properly. Okay, so now we're going to take a look about how JavaScript actually works and how it's able to modify the web pages that uh, are previously static. So we're introducing a new concept called the document object model, um, or the DOM tree. And what this really talks about is how HTML uh, is structured. Um, as we know, when we, when we take a look at a typical HTML document, here's an example, um, what you get is a bunch of nested tags, right? And when you write HTML code, it's always best to sort of to, to keep this nested structure um, apparent to yourself so that you can tell exactly where things are embedded, who's the parent uh, of what element, who's the child of what element. And um, visually, what JavaScript does is it sort of creates this structure right here um, based off this example HTML. Uh, it doesn't actually you know, create this drawing, but this is what it, how it thinks. Um, it starts up at the top where you have the HTML parent, and then it has a head, body, um, title for the head, and then within the body we have a div and um, a header and a paragraph. So um, a little bit more on the DOM tree. Um, for the DOM tree, we talked about how the container is a parent. So in this case, when we have an image tag, uh, right here this image is the parent of the um, of that element. And within it, we have um, sort of children of it. In this case, we have a source attribute. Um, so whenever you create an image, you specify a source and its location. And it sort of generates this structure here. And when you add styling to that, uh, to that image itself, um, it creates sort of this style block. And then uh, more specifically, the types of, um, types of rules that you added for that CSS, or for that uh, HTML element. Okay, another thing is um, that with JavaScript, when it 
whenever it edits the document object model tree, it does so in real time. So immediately, once JavaScript makes a change, you're going to see that change apparent um, in the browser. It's not going to wait for some like a reload of the browser or some other type of event before you see a change. So you can think back to the example of um, where we had the menu shifting around. Um, all that stuff was triggering JavaScript, and it created changes that happened immediately. So um, we have a question here. How do we take advantage of this to modify web page after it's been loaded? So I'm going to sort of talk about something else um, for a little bit, um, sort of as a precursor to help you guys understand JavaScript a little bit better. So for a lot of um, browsers these days, um, what you have is this special tool called, um, usually it's called inspect element. And what, that's, what that allows you to do is if you go to a web page and you sort of right click on a specific HTML element, like a header or a paragraph, it's going to pop up this dialog here and show you exactly where that HTML is located inside, um, inside the document. And it's going to provide you some CSS. So um, with Firefox, in order to gain this ability in your browser, you, get, you have to install an add-on um, called Firebug. And it's a really great tool. I, I use that a lot. Um, Safari has it sort of built in, but not uh, available by default. You have to, there's some like short instructions about how to get that. Chrome is a lot cooler and it has it by default, so you can like just open Chrome immediately right now and then right click on something and inspect the element. Uh, Internet Explorer has one, but uh, I don't suggest. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, ha it has one, but I don't suggest you use it. It's very, it's, uh, it's hard to use. Huh? It's the same as Firefox. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's very similar in the look of Firebug, but um, I, I, it's not as user friendly um, as Firebug at all, or in special So, um, so just one thing: whenever you're developing uh, web pages, you should develop in one of these three browsers first, and then later on, if you need to support Internet Explorer, um, develop for that afterwards. All right, so I'm just going to show you. Quick example. Of how inspect element works. So you go to yahoo.com and let's just say you wanted to look at that photo. So what you would do is right click on that photo, inspect the element, and it pops up this dialog. <coughs> And it shows you exactly where it is in the HTML. So if you kind of go up, you see that it's constructed the DOM tree, and it's nested within a bunch of stuff. So, and then right here on the right side, what you do is you have some styling. So if I, um, so in this case, it has a height of 154 pixels. And with this inspect element tool, what you can do is, what's really cool is that you can sort of kill, kill specific CSS rules 